let's kick off the coverage with Jonathan Sukenik playing Grixis Delver and Adam Yurchik playing Teamer Delver. Let's get some Wastelands going, baby. It's been too long. It has been too long. Good to see Timer, Teamer Delver being an option. I think, you know, for our legacy portions of our team constructed events, of course, our legacy open we'll have later this year. And I can't forget that Pro Tour 25th anniversary. I know a lot of players watching at home trying to figure out what the best legacy deck to play given the changes to the metagame. And Teamer Delver, I think it's a pretty safe option. It is, but th those changes are so destabilizing that in, in some respects you kind of have to go and start over. You know, are things better or worse for lands now? Yeah. For example, uh, Deathrite Shaman is an annoying card and for that deck, so in the abstract you'd say, well, it's better for lands. But if the banning of or uh, the banning of Deathrite Shaman and the uh, disincentive to play Grixis Delver means more Sneak and Show, more Reanimator, that could end up being bad for lands, yeah. even though Deathrite Shaman is an annoying card for them. A wooded foothill is still from Adam Yurchik. Going to search up a tropical island. That brings him down to 19. Delver of Secrets is where Yurchik will get things started. To Sukenik, we will go. Grixis Delver, of course, a deck that was dominant for a couple of years in the Legacy format. Deathright Shaman helping a lot there. However, Sukenik can't play that card anymore. Can't play Gataxian Probe either to go along with maybe Cabal Therapy and Young Pyromancer. So do we see any different creatures here that we didn't see otherwise? Is he playing something like a Grim Lava Mancer or something like that? Two main deck copies of Grim Lava Mancer. Uh, Baleful Strix, three Young Pyromancer, two True Name Nemesis, three Gurmag Angler. True Name Nemesis, to me, that's the interesting card here. Uh, that card got propped up a lot because of Death Ride Shaman, yeah. because you, you had more mana than these sort of strategies typically do. And especially when you get into the mirror match, it's easy to say, well, True Name Nemesis can't die. It blocks everything. That card's got to be good. So much of the game in Delver mirror matches is just getting your mana off the ground. Yep. And any three-mana card gets stranded a good percentage of the time. Your chick is going to reveal a copy of Spell Pierce to his Delver of Secrets. You saw Sukenik start things off in the Underground Sea in a Delver of his own. So now Delver is transformed into Insectile Aberration. Your chick will come across here for three. Grand Prix Houston champion earlier. Yeah. And there is a wasteland. <laughs> the best part of waking up. <laughs> Sukenik does not have a spell to reveal. He will draw another copy of Underground C. His devil will remain as a 1 1. He'll come across for one. Your trick will fall down to 18. Sukenik with a volcanic island and now a grim lava mancer. Force of will removing spell pairs will take care of that. So Adam aggressively using force of will here on the lava mancer. Perhaps we will see Sukenik fight back and we will not. Your chick's deck, not with all the removal spells in the world here, and if he can't answer a Grimlock Mancer, he's got to fight over it with Force. We'll go back over to Adam now, who will draw a card. Insect Aberration will come across for three yet again. Sukenik will fall down to 14. And does your chick maybe have another Wasteland to really get things going this morning? He's got a Flooded mm. Strand instead. The follow-up here is a Brainstorm. We'll see if this does resolve here for Adam, and it will. I think we would have seen Day's last turn uh, to fight over the Force of Will and the Grim Lava Mancer. So, your chick probably knows he's in the clear, but good sequencing to lead off with the fetch land regardless. You mentioned Adam and what removal does he have in his deck. We see for him, of course, four Lightning Bolts and a copy of Fire and Ice, along with a Dismember, as your chick will sacrifice that Flooded Strand to search up a Volcanic Island after that Brainstorm, making it a healthy one. I would never play with the Fire Ice in these decks. Yeah, I would So, Kenneth has one also. It's like... Two mana? Yeah. <laughs> Two. It's hard to get one. We oftentimes see Forked Bolt in that slot. That's fine. Yeah. That's, a, that's a one mana spell. Yeah, that's one. That's You can cast that to call it 42% of the time. That's <laughs> I, that's fine. We're going to head back over to Sukenik now. You saw your chick just fetch and pass. Got to be cognizant of Stifle now as Force of Will the Reveal there for Sukenik. So he'll transform him, his Delver, into Insectile Aberration. And there's an underground C. And now Sukenik will come across here for three in the air. Yurchik's going to fall down to 13 unless he has a lightning bolt, which it appears he does not. So here's another copy of Grim Lava Mancer. You mentioned that Sukenik is playing two in his main deck. He's found them both. And now remember that Sukenik has picked up a Force of Will, too, so he may have the tools to fight over this, even if Yurchik has one of his lightning bolts. Yurchik will draw a card. He will start off with another copy of Brainstorm. Brainstorm will draw three cards here. He'll have to put two back in just a moment, Will Adam. Grim Lava Mancer 
looking to take control of this game pretty quickly here. I know we're only on the fourth turn of the game, but Lava Mancer can take care of Insectile Aberration and then maybe start taking care of Yurchuk's life total. Though interesting, Sukenik here uh, pretty light on uh, material in his graveyard. Just has drawn a lot of his his lands naturally. So not a lot of fuel for a Grim Lava Mancer, but if he's able just to kill the Insect Dial Aberration, that's already a great use of one mana. And the long-term implications of a Grim Lava Mancer on the battlefield, uh, really challenging for your chick. Adam looks like he's decided which cards he's going to put back here. Eh, not just yet. Brainstorm still obviously a very difficult card to resolve, but Adam has found the order. <coughs> Brainstorm is done resolving. The follow-up here, oh uh, yes, it is a wasteland. He will go after the underground sea and not the volcanic island. Maybe notable there, not trying to cut the red mana. Well, uh, he may also be trying to win a battle over a removal spell here and cutting out something like Spell Pierce. But yeah, that, that play is interesting here if... Uh, your trick is not picking a fight over the Grim Lava Mancer. Because you could hope maybe he doesn't have a way to fetch. He hasn't played any fetch lands here. And one way to answer the Grim Lava Mancer here is take care of his red sources of mana. You see your trick waiting patiently here for a response from Sukenik. Sukenik is going to fire off a copy of Brainstorm in response to the Wasteland. Sukenik floating a little bit of mana there. And your trick says that's totally fine. So John will draw three cards. Yeah, I suspect Sukenik added a blue. Your check went into combat, and now we're seeing the brainstorm. Two cards will be going back here for John in just a moment. Among the cards he did draw, Fire Ice is one of them. You mentioned two mana being Ooh. a lot. You can you can see why. Blue card to force will. That's true. You do get that bonus. As Sukenik will put two cards back, his brainstorm is done resolving. Your check will come across here for three. And now there is a lightning bolt. So that's why you see this play here from your chick going after maybe the land you weren't expecting and now Sukenik has to consider this force of will and if he wants to use it on a lightning bolt. And your chick's wasteland here also potentially suggesting that he has days to fight over. Another reason to go after the available mana that Sukenik had instead of going over after the abstractly more valuable volcanic island. That lightning bolt will resolve in the Grim Lava Mancer. Sukenik is going to quickly untap and draw. He's picked up a copy of Wasteland of his own. And I think the reason there for Sukenik to not fight out with Force of Will is your chick's play so loudly signals days in hand that he knows he's going to lose the fight. Your chick had the option of going after Volcanic Island, which is a pretty good hedge against Lava Mancer in that spot. If he's going after the Underground Sea, he's confident he can win a battle over the lightning bolt should Sukenik decide to force back. We'll see Sukenik sacrifice the fetch line here. I think we're going to be all tied up at 10 as he'll search up another copy of Underground C. That's his third one this game. As you take a look at our scoreboard there, you see Christopher Cronenberger with his blue-red prison deck. Might have to send that into the sideboard with Nick Miller a bit later today in Modern. He's up a game over A.J. Kerrigan, who's playing four-color Death Shadow. Worth noting here, Sukenik lists three Underground C through Volcanic Island. Should something happen to the Underground C, he is without black mana for the remainder of the game. Young Pyromancer, the follow-up here for John. You can see here from Sukenik's deck, no Deathrite Shaman, no Gataxia in Pro, but still pretty competitive here in this game against your chick, as your chick will now daze. This is something that John had on his radar. You did as well, Patrick, and now it has been revealed, and daze will take care of that young Pyromancer, which, honestly, I think Sukenik wants to have happen because he's got Fire Ice in hand. Yeah, I think the play here is free up. The, he knows that daze is in hand. He's got a couple of two-mana spells in his hand, so there's no way he can play around it. Uh, bleed out the days there with the young Pyromancer, hopefully be able to fire the Insect Dial Aberration next turn, and then you've got an Insect Dial Aberration on the battlefield against nothing. A lot can go wrong, but that is the line. For your chick, he's going to sacrifice his Pluto Delta right away. Not going to search up any green mana here, and I think we might just see him pass the turn back yet again. Again, we see that play because Stifle is going to be a card that you're going to see a lot more in Legacy nowadays with the banning of Deathrite Shaman. And your trick's play here, signaling a red heavy hand if he's going to get a second Volcanic Island to protect himself from Wasteland. Yeah, the inability to cast Tarmogoyf or Nimble Mongoose now is there's a Wasteland there from Sukenik. Sukenik now looks like he might be firing off that Fire Ice. He's going to weigh some things here. And it looks like Sukenik's just going to pass the turn back, and on the upkeep, he will cast this. Now, this will be a spell pierce. You see Adam. Adam looks like he's ready for, for a little war here. 
how he's holding his hand. That's Force of Will removing a preordain from Sukenik. So Sukenik's going to fall down to six. Spell Pierce will be countered, and now Insect Celebration will die. And so Sukenik, even though uh, Yurchik was there with a, a timely Spell Pierce, has set up the situation that he wanted to. And this was over the course of several turns here of working through the days and getting himself in a position where he could get rid of uh, Yurchik's Flip Delver and hopefully have uh, an uncontested battlefield. Well, last card is a Nimble Mongoose. He had to peel the Trop maybe to cast it, but he got the job done. So now we go back over to Jonathan Sukenik. See the life totals here, 6-6. Six to six. Sukenik has the lead. But a lot can go wrong here. Okay. Your trick is drawing to a bolt for lethal. And so it was Sukenik. All right. It is a brainstorm here for John. I see a couple of different cards there. And that, that one stings there because Sukenik tapped the underground C, mm -hmm. hoping to find a lightning bolt because the lightning bolt here is lethal. He has not found lightning bolt, but did find Gurmag Angler, which would also be great in this spot, yep. and he cannot cast it. That is a card he cannot cast at this moment, unfortunately, for Jonathan Sukenik. So he's consulting with AJ Kerrigan, who is currently down a game and sideboarding about what card to put back and what the game plan here. While they do craft a game plan, I'll let you know that bottom match there between Eric Rill and Abraham Stein. Eric Rill, a five-time SCG Tour Open champion, does win game number one with his Grixis mid-range deck, up a game over Abraham Stein playing mono red aggro. Notable mono red, not red black, like one Owen Turtenwald would certainly recommend that you play. Well, his deck has a, a, the lightest touch of black. Not exactly mono red. What do we got the, the touch there for? Is there a scrounger hiding out in there or anything? Cut to ribbons in the sideboard, and uh, he has some scroungers too. Okay, sure. But only five red black duels, so not a, not a ton. Yeah, so not, we're not talking on license disintegration. Or no, like no, 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 no. All right, here comes the attack for three. Now you saw Sukenik not attack. I think the plan here is just stabilize with the angler, and he will draw the angler and he will play the angler. Because he's got to be worried about Yurchik drawing to a Lightning Bolt himself. Yes, that's true. So if he's confident that the Gurmag Angler here is gives him a huge advantage over the next couple of turns, play it safe, trade off. Even if Yurchik draws a Bolt here, it's not that great for him. And now you see Sukenik as he's going to be delving. He wants to know exactly what he can remove from his graveyard to ensure that if Yurchik peels a Tarmogoyf, it can't combat the Angler. So Yurchik will draw a card, and he'll pass the turn back. And, and if he's passing... Looks like he's going to take a hit here. Now, he is at six, so he'll only go down to one. But it looks like Sukenik is now going to play a ponder. Going to leave that red mana available, hoping to draw a lightning bolt. Not sure if he found one or not. Remember, he can shuffle with ponder. It's not brainstorm in this instance. But he's going to keep it. Looks like he found a wasteland. Here comes an attack for five. Well, I have to imagine wasteland is going to just be played in pass. Going to go after a red source, actually. And now Yurchik will draw... And he will concede the game. So Jonathan Sukenik is going to win game number one here over Adam Yurchik. Grixis Delver up a game over Teamer Delver. And, hey, who says you need Deathrite Shaman and Gataxian Pro? No, this deck was fine prior to those cards. And yeah. there's a bunch of replacements for Gataxian Pro. I mean, not the same rate, not the synergies with the Cabal Therapy. But if you want some cantrip to fill out the rest of the list, there are plenty of options in Legacy. Well, my friends, we're going to go to our sideboard now. We're going to start with Adam Yurchik playing Teamer Delver. He's got two copies of Flusterstorm, two Surgical Extraction, and a whole bunch of one of. So bear with me. A Pyroblast, a Red Elemental Blast, an Ancient Grudge, and a Braid. A Submerge, a True Name Nemesis. Sylvan Library, Life of the Loam. A Rough Tumble, a Grafdigger's Cage, and a Winter Orb. I like the Loam in this matchup. I think you can go uh, pretty deep with trying to wasteland people out of the game. I think the Red Blast and the Pyro Blast are just fine. Um, but I, even in this kind of matchup, I'm, I'm skeptical of True Name Nemesis because I think getting the three mana is just so challenging. Well, I think we just saw a game there, right? Where getting the three mana was going to be pretty difficult. When you don't have access to Death, when you don't have access to Death Right Shaman, sure, Life of the Home can maybe get you to three mana, but we saw how difficult it might be to just cast that Fire and Ice. Exactly. You know, I, you know if, if it's here and it's one copy, I, I would guess it's coming in, but I'm skeptical of... Basically, any three mana card. <laughs> you got to remember too; he's got he's already got a true name main. Yeah. So he'd be boarding into two three mana cards. I know that sounds crazy for you standard modern players out there, but three mana in this format, especially when wastelands involved, that's a lot. It's tough. Uh, take a look at Jonathan Sukenik, who's got three power blast, two abrade, two diabolic edict, two surgical extraction, two cabal therapy, a dismember, an echoing truth, a snapcaster mage, and a thought seize. This is a really nice sideboard here. I love the uh, two copies of diabolic edict. 
especially here as a way. I, you know, your trick doesn't have that many threats, and it's an answer to Nimble Longoose additionally. And the three Pyro Blasts, I think, are good here too. Those are the options there for both players. They will shuffle, and we'll be watching game number two in just a moment. But, hey, it's time to sell some cards, man. That means we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale where we're selling sealed products and playmats. Yeah, you never uh, head over to go.starcitygames.com slash weekly sale. Uh, every Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, there's a new sale, new category, so make sure to be going back to the website at least once a week. Right now, up to 50% off select playmats and sealed products. All right, now let's take a look here. I've got Goose of St. Traft in the back. Three brave mice on the right-hand side. Uh... It's that stupid penguin boat. Can't remember the name of that one. Not important. Move Not on. Important. Move Lo on. Okay. Okay. Uh, pro promo Lotus Petal. Yeah. That's a. That's that's a. What are they called? Invitation. Uh, Invention. Uh, Invention Lotus Petal. Got it. Uh, elves versus inventors. Could not tell you. I think that's an Azuri. And then the inventor. I couldn't tell you. Elves versus inventors. Yeah. I don't. I didn't make the. Product. That is a. I didn't make that. That is a random. <laughs> right. But all right. Shadows over to Strat Dominator boxes. Boom. Go to starcitygames.com slash weekly sale. What could be in the elves versus inventors box? What is an inventor? Artifacts versus uh, Viridian Shamans? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's not as catchy. I don't think that was sell as well. Uh, we take a look at our scoreboard here. So Kenny Cup one, you just watched that match. Your trick will be on the play here for game number two. Christopher Cronenberger up a game with his blue red prison deck over AJ Kerrigan playing four color Death Shadow. And then Eric the Thrill Rill making his return here to the SCG Tour with Grixis Midrange up a game over Abraham Stein playing mono red aggro with a very, very slight touch of black. So these players will shuffle up, get ready here for game a numero dos. Great to have you joining us here early this morning. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan. We are here in Philadelphia for the StarCityGames.com Philadelphia Open Weekend, part of Season 2 of the SCG Tour. Make sure you are following at SCG Tour, hashtag SCG Philly all weekend long as we've got ourselves some bingo boards we'll be taking a look at here oh, over sure. the course of the weekend. Ah, the, the name of the playmat I missed is the Flight Stuff, which makes a lot of sense. I can't believe I missed that. I do apologize to our wonderful graphic design and brand team in the office back in Roanoke, Virginia. I blew it. I blew it. So wait, Matt. Okay, this is an inter this is a new board. I haven't seen this one yet this morning. I try I try not to look until I actually get to the tournament. Match with an invitational winner. I don't think. Okay, I don't have one of those. We didn't see a Tarmogoyf cast. Player didn't cycle a card. Spell cat. No, nope, no spell. Oh, that fire ice was in the upkeep, right? It was in the upkeep. Not in the draw step. Okay. No cards with suspend. Your chick did have. He had a permanent left, didn't he? He had one land left. Yeah, yeah, he had a volcanic. I have player loses no permanence on the battlefield. I got close there. Yep. Tough. Three historic cards played in one turn. Come on, Nick. It's artifacts. Yeah, but historic. Get that. Just say three artifacts. Yeah, I know. Get out of here with I historic. I know. Graveyard Marshal ability activated. No one plays that card. This is nonsense. What card? Graveyard Marshal. You couldn't even tell me what that does. I have no idea what yeah, that is. Yeah, you couldn't tell me what that is. Black, black, three, two, two and a black. Remove a creature from your graveyard, make a 2-2 zombie, enters the battlefield tap. It's from course at 2019. Okay. Good to know. Unreal. I'm on hard mode this week. Unlikely, unlikely to come up, but yeah. good to know. If you're playing zombies, if you're playing zombies in standard, that will come up. Zombies in standard, a fringe deck right now. Fringe deck. Very good against mono green aggro, however, as I've come to find out on Magic Online. Is it because of removal spells? It is because of Death Baron, giving all the other zombies death touch. Sure. And how your deck has a no Ta removal. Yeah, taking advantage of the fact <laughs> that they have no removal. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. It's game over, basically. They generally have two Sky Sovereigns in their deck. And so here's a ponder off of a tropical island from Adam Yurchik. Cleveland native, Grand Prix Houston champion, and if memory serves, ninth place at Pro Tour Hollywood many years ago. An underground C, a Delver of Secrets as we head back over to your chick. I played against Jonathan Sukenik in one of the previous team opens. Okay. He loves this. <laughs> yeah? The, the legacy games of manipulating stuff and sequencing your spells at the right time and Timing your wastelands. He lives for this. It's his favorite thing. This is his favorite thing. If he's happy, I'm happy. Yeah. He is happy. Delver Secret's coming in and in Mongo saying, come get some. It didn't transform. Sukenik, fine with trading off. But the question is, is Adam Yurchik 
fine with trading off. It's just an interesting little game inside of the game here. I mean, uh, you don't really want to no attacks, no blocks. Your check's deck is probably post-board full of cards that can kill a Delver. Yeah. You have m m much less cards that can handle a Nimble Mongoose, so offer it up. Well, there's Wasteland. Worst case scenario is he takes a point. I'm going to take a look. I I'm not sure if Adam's the type to play Stifle. Okay, he's got four. I take it all back. There, bang. Bang, bang. Stifle it. Get him. Get him. It and now there's the a coast storm. is clear for your <laughs> own. <laughs> I think Adam's on the hunt for one. He'll draw three, put two back here in just a moment. You see his Oh, teammate. he got exotic. Did he find one? I think so. You see his teammate there, Christopher Cronenberger, in the foreground. Currently up a game with that blue-red prison deck. If we have time to jump that way, we certainly will. Don't see blue-red prison a lot in modern. But Cronenberger is known for playing some pretty innovative decks across all formats. You'll see there on the bottom, Eric Rill, Abraham Stein. They're all tied up. Stein able to get a game there with Mono Red Aggro pretty quickly against that Grixis mid-range deck that Rill is playing. Brainstorm is done resolving. Your chick, ah, yes. Ah, yes. He'll pass. We'll see it on the upkeep. Uh, da, da, will we? Yes, kaboom. Yeah, of course we will. Come on. Gone. This is the whole point. Does Sukenic have a land to play? He does. He'll play an underground seat past the turn back. We're going to go back over to Adam Yurchik, who didn't get to fetch after that brainstorm. So not a perfect brainstorm, as they do say. But still a pretty darn good one since he was able to find a wasteland. There is a fetch land in Pluto Delta, and Adam will just pass the turn back. No threat to deploy as we go back over to Jonathan Sukenik, who's picked up a true name nemesis. It's good once it gets on the table. If he can ever get it If there. he can get it on the table. Your chick just going to draw past the turn back. He saw Sukenik play a copy of Volcanic Island, so Sukenik rebuilding his mana base. Now there's a Misty Rainforest. So, John not doing bad here rebuilding after that Wasteland got stifled, and then he got Wastelanded by Adam. Adam now looks like he's going to play a Ponder off a of green source. That Ponder will resolve, so your chick will take a look at three cards. He will, of course, decide if he wants to keep these three cards in a certain order or shuffle them away. Don't want to confuse that one with Brainstorm. And now, your chick has kept with his ponder, and he will pass back over to Sukenik, who has drawn another land there in Volcanic Island. So Trina Nemesis is actually not going to be hard for Sukenik to cast this turn. And as we do know, if Trina Nemesis does make its way onto the battlefield, it's not leaving the battlefield. No, I, I, in Grix's matchups, it's a little bit different because there's Diabolic Edict, potentially things like Lillian of the Veil, Marsh Casualties. Against Teamerless, if it gets on the battlefield, it stays. So Sukenik here would, would prefer to sort of whittle down Yurchik's defenses over smaller battles and clear the way that way. You can see right now, even with, with three mana and a fetch land, he's not comfortable deploying it because you're playing into Pyroblast, you're playing into Daze plus Stifle. There's a lot of ways that Yurchik here can defend himself, and you know he's passing with a bunch of cards in his hand. His hand has to be very reactive. Interesting play there from Sukenik. Sukenik actually targeting Adam with the Thought Scour. You th would think that maybe John would want to target himself simply because he does have Grimag Angler in his deck, but he elects not to. So we head back over to Adam Yurchik now, who's drawn a land for the turn. He'll play a Volcanic Island if he passes the turn back. One of these players is going to have to make a move here eventually, you have to imagine. The question is how they're going to do it, and I think, Patrick, it probably involves kicking things off with a one-mana spell. Well, Sukenik's just going to go for it. Okay. I'm, a little, I'm a little surprised because True Day Nemesis is such a prize in this kind of matchup to fire it in against seven cards in your chick's hand. But if the alternative is discard a hand size, I guess, or if Sukenik thinks he can win the battle, if he's got enough cheap interaction, it has to be zero and one man interaction. But if he thinks he can win the fight, then great. Get this on the battlefield and start generating a sizable advantage. Well, we are going to see Adam Yurchik play a brainstorm in response. He'll draw three cards, of course, put two back, and he does have a fetch land there to make it a pretty darn good brainstorm. But I think he's looking to load up and win the war over this card because if True Name Nemesis does resolve, it's going to be very difficult for Adam to win. Yeah, it's moat when your trick's ahead and then unstoppable when uh, it's neutral or better for Sukenik. Fire Ice, come on. I don't love it. I don't love it. True Name is in no counter war. Excuse me. 
I don't. No, I think I think your chick might. Uh, oh, he's already on tapped his land. Oh, oh, okay. Then yeah. Okay, well, your chick is in a ton of trouble. Yes. I cannot believe there was nothing at all. Fire and ice, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's ambitious, is what it is. He even has his mana. It's still bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to fork bolt someone, I'm down. Chain lightning. Also down. Dismembers. He's got one. Right. Fire Ice, a very ambitious card. Here's a Wasteland. Maybe Adam's got a true nemesis of his own. All right, he does. Now, when Sukenik played his true, his true name nemesis, it was clear to us that he was ready to fight over it. So you have to imagine he's ready to fight over this. Yeah. Although, remember, with, with Sukenik sideboarding into Diabolic Edicts, he, he doesn't have to pick the biggest battle. He can allow your tricks to resolve. Depends what's in his hand. But he, he has outs if true name nemesis gets on the battlefield. The same is not true from your trick side. Force of Will. Going to go after... The tree nemesis, Flusterstorm, says I'm going to go after the Force of Will. So Force of Will will be countered by Flusterstorm. But I have a feeling that tree nemesis is still on the stack. Now you take a look at the way that Adam tapped his mana. No more access to blue mana at this stage. So here's Force of Will removing days. So Sukenic knows that he can, you know, at this point your trick is only fighting back with Force of Wills of his own. Mm -hmm. So Sukenic can pay for a daze. He doesn't have to worry about getting stifled in response because there's no blue mana. Your trick will fire off that wasteland to take care of the underground sea. But Sukenik has won the war over Trini Nemesis and already has one of his own. So you have to imagine Jonathan feels like he's pretty far ahead and Brainstorm's only going to push him further ahead. As he will draw not one, not two, but three cards and put two back here in just a moment. Delver of Secrets among the cards that he is swinging around in his hand right now. Sukenik has already demonstrated quite a bit of knowledge in the modern format with Jeskai and blue-white control. And now he's really showing off here with Grixis Delver. No death right, no Gataxi in Pro, but it appears Patrick, no problem. No, he's been playing these sort of decks for the better part of a decade now. So whatever the cards are, who cares? It's all the same. <laughs> he's coming in for three with the true name, plays a Delver before that. But Sukenik is in pretty good position here. Now we'll see a ponder here for Yurchik. Yurchik looking for help. I don't know what Sukenik's options were. I'm a little surprised to see him not shuffle away a Delver of Secrets. At this point, with, with Yurchik... Not really doing a whole lot and not having a whole lot of tools to fight over True Name Nemesis on uh, either Sukenix or to push through his own. His hand just has to have a bunch of bolts in it. There's nothing else that could really be there. And so I'm surprised to really value the Delver of Secrets at anything at all because it's just going to die. Well, there is that lightning bolt to take care of the Delver of Secrets. The follow-up is a Tarmogoyf. We'll see how large that Tarmogoyf is, assuming it resolves, which it does not. Force of Will removing a Ponder will take care of the Lurgoyf. And now we'll head back over to Sukenik. He will draw his card. Picked up another copy of Ponder. Here's an attack for three. Your trick will fall down to 13. And now your follow-up is that Ponder. So Sukenik will take a look at the top couple of cards. We'll see if he's happy with what he's found. Looks like a couple of lands in there. So I'd be a little surprised if he's pleased with that. Yeah, it looked like uh, Sukenik there put back a cantrip and a land. So the Delver of Secrets is better than a, than a land in that spot. That's fine to play it, but I, I don't think he was optimistic about it surviving, and it did not. Well, Ponder is going to keep. Sukenik has drawn his card, and he can, of course, fetch away on Adam's end step or his own upkeep if he would like. For now, it's a nimble mongoose there for Adam Yurcha. It does have threshold, so it'll be a 3-3 goose that is loose on the battlefield here. But Sukenik's really on the front foot here. He has an advantage in the life totals, and if it ever changes and gets bad for him, he can just sit back on defense. Uh, Trinity Nemesis is so powerful. Uh, part of the reason it's so powerful once it resolves is it's powerful no matter what the game looks like. If Sukenik's ahead, it's incredible. And if he's behind, it's a great way of catching up, stabilizing, giving himself some time. Sukenik going to fetch up a Underground C. He'll play a Polluted Delta, and now he'll play another copy of Trinity Nemesis. And if this resolves, I think we're just probably we're, done. We're done. Yeah. At, at that point, uh, Sukenik's position on the battlefield is so good and basically unassailable. There's no way for your chick to move around this. He can't go wide. He can't block. But have you considered this? Oh, wow. Have you considered the ice half of fire and ice to draw a card? 
There's no way. Ha! Oh. Ah, ha! Take that! Take that, fork bolt guy. Yeah, but it could have been another cantrip. He could have. <laughs> he could have played with a preordain in, instead, he right, could've. and done the same thing. We're still. Hey, he's still alive. There's no. Uh, I, I mean, he's. In, I think he's in, I still mean, in look, very look, serious I think trouble. He's, I think he's in bad shape. But a Tarmogoyf, if he draws one, maybe turns it around. What do we have here? We got a game. We maybe got a game here. It uh, looks like Suketic's going to fall down to 13. He'll draw a card. He might have to put the brakes on. Who knows? Who knows? We'll find out in a second here. If he has a removal spell for the Delver, then we go back to just Sukenik's way ahead on the race. If your trick draws a second creature, then Sukenik goes on defense, assuming it's not a Delver. Mm -hmm. Sukenik, it looks like with two cards in hand, we are going to see Lightning Bolt take care of the Delver, and will Sukenik continue to attack? He's going to put the brakes on. We're going to head back over to Adam Yurchik now, who will play another Nimble Mongoose. Pass the turn back. Sukenik will draw. Picked up a copy of Brainstorm. Not the worst card to draw, but not interested in casting it right now. Yeah, I like Sukenik being patient here. Uh, you know, wh why rush it if he's going to just hang back on defense? Wait until your hand can use significant improvement and then Brainstorm and shuffle away your garbage. You can tell, folks, Sukenik, he may be a young one, but this is not his first rodeo. There's a third Nimble Mongoose. Wasteland the draw. Not the appropriate time to get him, I would say. No. Christopher Cronenberger has gotten his win for his team. Got the better of AJ Kerrigan. It's the blue-red prison deck that he's playing. Very innovative in its nature. Like I mentioned, we might have that in the sideboard for a deck tech. Does take care of four-color Death Shadow as now Jonathan Sukenik will play a Brainstorm. So Sukenik's team is behind right now. And Zuchenik looking to climb back ahead in this game with that brainstorm. Keep in mind, Abraham Stein, Eric Rill, they are in game number three of their match. You can see A.J. Kerrigan in the foreground there looking to help his teammate there, Abraham Stein. Big draw here from Yurchik while this game's in a holding pattern. If he can find his one copy of Loam. That would be if, good. If, if Zuchenik's not going to do anything and just hang back on defense, you could pivot to try to wasteland all of his lands out of the game. For now, Yurchik will just pass the turn back. Sukenik's in a sacrifice line. He's going to fall down to 12, I believe. And 12 is an interesting life total, different from 13, where you're looking at a bunch of 3-3s three on the other side of the battlefield. Yeah, it, it is a significant, uh, especially with your tech having bolts in his deck as well. I don't think Sukenik can uh, hold off on sacking or pricing a fetch land for the rest of the game and has to improve his draw steps. But, yeah, that's a, that's a significant point of damage that Sukenik just took. We're going to go back over to John now. John pretty loaded up with a hand here. He's going to play a copy of Young Pyromancer, and this will do a nice job of creating some chump blockers, and he'll start by making one via preordain. In response, we'll see a lightning bolt here from Adam. He'll get a Dylan Donigan elemental token on the battlefield. Now Young Pyromancer will bite the dust. Preordain will then resolve. So, scry two, and then draw a card. It looks like Eric Rill has won his match over Abraham Stein, two games to one. So the team of Yurchik, Kronenberger, and Rill, they have won this match. It looks as though Sukenik and Yurchik want to play this game out. And if they do, we're going to stick and stay with them. If they ever do opt to pick it up and maybe save some mental energy, we'll, of course, come back to the booth and put a recap on the match. But if they're going to keep playing, we're going to keep watching. So here's a preordained from Sukenik. He'll put two cards in the bottom, picks up a copy of Grim Lava Mancer. Grim Lava Mancer will now be played there from Jonathan Sukenik. And we'll see if this one does resolve, and it will. So we head back over to Adam Yurchik as Sukenik is starting to clutter up the battlefield a little bit here. And this will be a, ooh, an expensive dismember. Uh, that's significant, too. Now true name is lethal in two shots. Yeah, and Yurchik is giving away a little bit of information by showing that Scalding Tarn in hand, too. Though Sukenik not willing to attempt to turn the corner here just yet. John playing a little bit safe. Stifle the draw there from Yurchik. You can see Stifle in this matchup goes from very good in the early turns to pretty poor in the late ones. Yeah, and you're, you're sort of leaning on your cantrips and, and brainstorm in particular to, to prevent you from feeling the floor, shuffling it away in the bad spots. And the upside is huge when it's good, so I think on the balance it's the right kind of card for the matchup, but it definitely has moments of being quite poor. So kind of taking a good look at his graveyard here. Also wants to take a good look at his sideboard. One thing here for John, though his team has lost the match, and they're not off to a great start here this weekend, it's good to maybe get some good practice in against a very skilled player like Adam Yurchik, especially in this matchup, because you have to imagine Sukenik's going to play it at 
at least more than once this weekend. Yes. And Sukena Care taking a very, very passive posture right now. He could try to go for the kill over the course of two turns, but not wanting to risk that your chick's hand has a bunch of bolts in it. Just hang back. If this resolves, we might see an attack. And I think this is in line with how Sukenik has been playing the past handful of turns, along with how he played some of game number one, too. He doesn't get too aggressive, as here's a Delver of Secrets. This will be a Pyroblast to take care of that Delver. Sukenik will untap. Sukenik will draw. Curious, uh, curious to see, excuse me, where John goes next, as he does have a copy of Lightning Bolt in hand. Yeah, it, I, you can tell Sukenik is his strategy in this position is I'm not making a move until I believe I am 100 percent to win the mm -hmm. game. My position's so good that I don't need to risk anything. He'll play a young pyromancer, stifle the draw here, and mm -hmm. Yurchik says I can't win. I've just got stifles and lands, so you win, but my team wins. As the team of Adam Yurchik playing Team Delver, Christopher Cronenberger playing Blue Red Prison, and Eric Rill playing Grixis Midrange. They win this match. They're off to a great start here in Philadelphia. They are 1-0. and oh.